During the dry season, over half a million terns crowd onto this remote atoll in the Indian Ocean. Their chicks are still in their dark juvenile plumage. They vary in age. Whilst the more advanced chicks take to the air, others aren't quite ready yet. Those just starting to learn to fly use the shallow lagoon that occupies the center of the atoll as their training ground. It's difficult for some of them to stay aloft for long. Usually, they are solitary hunters, but about 50 of them have come here from neighboring reefs, attracted by this abundance of potential prey. The fledglings stay out of the water if they can. They even drink on the wing. If the Trivalli are to catch one now, they have to up their game. So there is a fish here that, amazingly, has a brain capable of calculating the airspeed, altitude, and trajectory of a bird. The time comes when every fledgling has to take to the air and collect food for itself. Parents lead them to the training grounds.
they are to survive, they must learn quickly. After a month of practicing over the lagoon, the youngsters start to leave and take their chances out over the open sea. To reach the young, juicy leaves on the other side, the group will have to cross. But the male is hesitant. Instead, it's the alpha female who takes the lead. Sounds of their splashes carry over 200 meters through the water and can draw unwanted attention. But unlike most other monkeys, proboscis are excellent swimmers. To survive here, they have evolved webbed feet. Finally, the reluctant male makes his move. But a mother and baby have been left behind. The baby must cling on for dear life. This time, the whole family have made it. Even the most vulnerable. KL is proving to be a loyal ally to David. And David is going to need him more than ever. By rare coincidence, three of the seven females have become sexually receptive at the same time. Their swellings attract the attention of all the males. The females will try to mate with as many males as possible. David must control them all to ensure that he is the one who mates. But some of the troop, like Luther, have other ideas. All the 
other males see this could be their chance. There has never been a more important moment for David to assert his power. He makes the first move. His rivals respond with their own display of strength and start to close ranks. David and KL seem to be outnumbered. Everything turns to chaos. <laughs> At some point during the night, the younger males turned on David. The scent has led the wolves into the forest. The buffalo could be anywhere around here. The trees make it harder for the wolves to isolate one calf. Soon the wolves push the buffalo out from the forest where they can focus on separating one of the buffalo from the herd. I can see her holding off Storm and Susie, but then the third wolf appears. Now she's really gonna have a tough job to get her calf out of this predicament. The calf knows its only chance is to stick tight to its mother's side. I realize the wolves are just trying to injure the calf. They don't have enough time to kill it before the mother buffalo would be on them. The mother's best chance is to get back into the shelter of the trees.
Somehow the mother and calf have given the wolves the slip. They've also found another calf that was separated from its mother earlier in the chase. Clamping her jaws over both nose and mouth, she can stay clear of those stiletto horns and cut off its airflow. But a spotted hyena is drawn to the commotion. close to twice the weight of a leopard. <laughs> Armed with bone-crushing jaws, this opportunist won't pass up the chance to cash in on the hard work of others. <laughs> As they mature, young males begin to explore the boundaries of the pride's territory. Red has ventured out alone. Trapped. 
by over 20 of them. <laughs> saved his cousin's life. At this time of year, polar bears on average succeed only once in 20 hunts. If the hunter is skinny like this one, that may not be often enough. All she can do is keep trying. To prevent her scent betraying her, she makes a wide sweep to get downwind of the seal. Getting close. She's now right behind the seal.
Incredibly, she caught the seal underwater. It's only small, but even so, its blubber alone will contain a hundred thousand calories, enough to sustain this bear for a week. And in that time, she might even catch another. But this can't go on forever. As summer continues, temperatures are rising. Each hunt requires more energy, draining the bears of their reserves. She is an experienced hunter. But her prey are always on high alert. Fortunately, she knows how to disappear. experience, most hunts end this way. But now she faces a dilemma. As evening draws in, leaving the cubs unprotected in their den could put them in danger. The night shift are already on the prowl. A sloth bear. Once the den has been discovered, it's no longer safe. She needs to move her family.
if undisturbed, wildebeest can drink eight liters in a single session. As his confidence builds, he is oblivious to what lurks beneath the surface. The herd is bewildered. Some have never seen a crocodile before. Even as the full horror unfurls, there is great confusion about just what is going on. And that was just the first attack. Three hundred hungry crocodiles live in the Grumeti River. <laughs> Wildebeest react differently to crocodiles and other predators. Even the adults seem unsure of just how much danger they're in. The cast desire to quench his thirst overcomes any fear he may have. The crocodiles maneuver around them with surprising ease. They are intelligent hunters plotting their attack with precision. A strike can happen at any time. Despite the carnage, the mother and calf survive. They stampede back onto the plains. For the baboons, it's more like a spectator sport. They might as well settle down. A single croc can take some time to overpower its victim. But crocodiles are cooperative feeders. They work together. The death roll breaks the prey into bite-sized chunks. But aggression can spill over. the snakes are on the alert. This is the best feeding opportunity they will get all year. On flat ground, a baby iguana can outrun a race of snake. But others are waiting in ambush. Another hatchling has its first glimpse of a dangerous world.
a snake's eyes aren't very good, but they can detect movement. So if the hatchling keeps its nerve, it may just avoid detection. Miraculous escape. The lucky survivors could begin learning the unique way of life demanded by this hostile island. Mm -hmm. 